The Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine was founded in 1990 by Jean-Yvon Perreur, a director of research with the French National Scientific Research Centre. It undertakes a number of different missions in close collaboration with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities. The aim is the preservation and presentation of Alexandria's exceptional heritage, which stretches over some 2,300 years. Jean-Yves, Alexandrie, pourquoi Alexandrie, pourquoi Eh bien, je suis arrivé au Caire, en fait, euh, en 1976, pour effectuer mon service militaire. Et dès ce moment-là, eh bien, je me suis intéressé à Alexandrie, car j'ai une formation de, de civilisation gréco-romaine, et Alexandrie m'a attiré tout de suite. Et lorsque j'ai terminé mes 12 ans à l'École française d'archéologie d'Athènes, eh je suis revenu presque naturellement à Alexandrie pour fonder le Centre d'études Alexandrine. Twenty-five years later, the Research and Service Unit, number 3134, of the French National Scientific Research Center has a staff of 80. Engineers, technicians, administrators and researchers. The center is jointly financed by the CNLS, the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, programs of the National Research Agency, and by the support of Friends of Associations. Lorsque je suis revenu en 1990, donc j'ai regardé autour de moi ce qu'il y avait à faire. On a commencé des fouilles terrestres, mais tout à coup, en 1993, la cinéaste Asma El Bakri me demande de faire avec elle un film sur le musée gréco-romain d'Alexandrie. That same year, the rather misguided placing of a number of concrete blocks in the sea off the citadel of Kite Bay led the Egyptian archaeological authorities to request that Jean-Yvon Perreur intervene and conduct a salvage excavation. Et donc c'était le début là d'une d'une longue fouille sous-marine qui dure encore jusqu'à maintenant. The researchers were convinced that these were the remains of a now completely destroyed monument. A team of divers and archaeologists was organized to map and study the blocks. The hypothesis was confirmed. These were the blocks from the Pharos, or lighthouse, of Alexandria that had been destroyed after several earthquakes. Alors, nous avons profité de la visite du président Chirac en 1995 euh, qui voulait visiter le, le site de la fouille sous-marine pour sortir de l'eau des grosses pièces, euh, des portes du phare, des statues colossales. Et donc, euh, toujours au cours de cette visite, les autorités égyptiennes nous ont demandé d'organiser avec elles un, un musée en plein air où nous allions présenter des obélisques, les statues colossales, un euh, musée qu'on peut toujours visiter aujourd'hui.
Alors ces statues colossales, ces obélisques, ces sphinx, il y a une trentaine de sphinx, nous racontent l'histoire du phare d'Alexandrie, comment les rois grecs, les Ptolémées, ont décoré leur ville, et particulièrement les grands monuments comme le phare, de pièces pharaoniques. En 1998, vous faites une exposition à Paris en effet, il y a eu une volonté des autorités égyptiennes au cours de l'année France-Égypte, en 1998, d'organiser au musée du Petit Palais une exposition sur les fouilles du phare, bien sûr, et aussi sur les autres fouilles terrestres que nous avions déjà engagées à Alexandrie. Et cette, cette exposition a duré trois mois et a attiré plus de 200 000 spectateurs. Since then, the campaigns have followed a rhythm of two per year. Around 3,000 elements of architecture and statuary have been cleared. Archaeology, epigraphy, the study of decoration and architecture have all provided answers to the numerous questions. Where do these blocks come from? Why are there so many? What was the real form of the seventh wonder of the world? The excavations today are now employing new technologies, such as digital photogrammetry, which can lead to virtual reconstructions of architectural ensembles. During the 1990s, Alexandria experienced a transition. Large cinemas, billiard halls, old sports grounds dating to the beginning of the century disappeared. Before the developers could move in, the land was temporarily given over to the archaeologists. Dès que vous êtes arrivé à Alexandrie, vous avez engagé des fouilles terrestres Je suis arrivé à Alexandrie donc en 1990 pour la deuxième fois et donc nous avons engagé des fouilles en 1992. La première était celle du Majestic, mais bientôt on suivi celle du Diana, du Billardo, etc. Et c'est là que nous avons trouvé la première mosaïque, celle avec la méduse. After restoration by the center, the Medusa mosaic was exhibited in Paris, then Agde, before joining the collections of the National Museum of Alexandria. As the 21st century approached, the ever-growing city needed highways. The construction of a major traffic artery designed to connect the road to Cairo with the port sent the archaeologists down into the city of the dead, Necropolis. The Centre d'Etude Alexandrine took charge of the excavations. Several hundred laborers and dozens of archaeologists were involved over several years until construction of the highway began again. Gabari est une de ces fouilles que nous avons menées entre 1997 et 2000. Cette fouille a duré trois ans. Et c'est la fouille d'une partie de la nécropolis du grand cimetière ouest d'Alexandrie qui nous a permis de trouver d'immenses tombes collectives avec un riche matériel à l'intérieur.
At the same time, a team of geophysicists began the search for the exact line of the heptastadion. Heptastad, c'était une une opération avec des géophysiciens de, du CNRS et de l'Université de Paris 6, euh, sous la direction d'Albert où nous avons pu corriger la carte d'Alexandrie, c'est-à-dire retrouver le véritable tracé de cette chaussée-pont qui reliait l'îlot de Pharos à, au continent. Et depuis, eh bien, nous dessinons différemment la carte d'Alexandrie. The use of geophysical technology also led the Centre d'études Alexandrine to work near the alabaster tomb in the area of the modern Christian cemeteries. At the beginning of the 21st century, the center was engaged in excavations within Kite Bay Citadel, on land belonging to the Greek Patriarchate on Fouad Street, and on the former Lux Cinema in the heart of the town, near Safia Saglul Street. From the foundation of Alexandria, a network of canals fed water into the city and filled immense cisterns during the period of the annual Nile flood. While the scholars of Bonaparte's Egyptian expedition could count 400, only a few have survived. The cisterns of Garaba, Ibn Battuta, Evangelismos, Dar Ismail, as well as a cistern at the Serapion, were studied. The Ennebi cistern was at the heart of a major project of renovation and presentation by the architects and archaeologists of Jean-Yves Empereur's team. Several excavation campaigns on the roof and around the cistern improved understanding of the functioning, the organization of the structure, as well as the dating. The use of 3D scanning techniques to examine the inside of the reservoir and create a visual image provided spectacular results. Several models of the cisterns were built. These masterpieces of precision at 1 20th scale give a clear appreciation of the interior volume of the monuments. Each element of this big puzzle was molded and so identical reproductions could be manufactured. These models have been exhibited across Europe. In 2013, the Royal Museum of Marimont in Belgium hosted the exhibition From the Nile to Alexandria, which had already been mounted in both Switzerland and France. Ancient objects related to the theme of water from the collections of the host museums were also exhibited. Alors quand j'étais au Caire donc entre 1976 et 78, euh, j'étais déjà venu souvent à Alexandrie parce que j'étais de formation euh, euh, grecque et romaine et donc euh, Alexandrie m'intéressait particulièrement et dès ce moment-là, j'ai appris à me promener euh, au sud du lac, à regarder les antiquités dans cette zone qui à l'époque était désertique, 
et à repérer ces immenses collines, ces cômes euh, qui étaient remplis d'amphores. Et euh, en 2012, en collaboration avec l'université d'Izmir, nous avons commencé une fouille sur l'un de ces dépotoirs, une immense villa viticole d'époque romaine avec son dépotoir d'amphores, ses fours, et cette villa exportait le vin vers le reste de la Méditerranée, jusqu'à Rome, où euh, il était fort goûté. Core drillings were taken on the same site in order to understand the landscape and its agriculture in antiquity. Close by, on the peninsula of Marea, is one of the rare examples of a harbour town on the shores of Lake Mariut that is still intact. At the end of the excavation season, the discovered material is moved under escort from its temporary store to the main storerooms in Chalalat Fort. Since 1999, the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine has been renovating a building from the beginning of the 19th century that was once part of an arsenal in the days of Muhammad Ali. The aim was to create an excavation storehouse and a place to study and restore archaeological material. Four chambers on the lower level are reserved for storage, one for stonework. On the upper floor, one of the chambers has been fitted out as a restoration lab, especially for metal objects, but also for the general study of archaeological material. Before the construction of modern buildings in Alexandria, the Antiquities Authority carries out sounding. In 2013, these revealed several mosaics. The restoration team of the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine assisted in lifting them. Released from the earth, turned over and placed on top of planks, the mosaics are then taken to the Chalalat storerooms. There, a mosaic restoration lab has been set up. The mosaics of the Greco-Roman Museum, the Nilotic mosaic, that of the athlete and others with geometric motifs, as well as those discovered in the ongoing soundings of the Antiquities Authority, are restored here. They are all destined to be exhibited in a future mosaics museum, of which the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine is one of the initiators. The mosaic of the dog, one of the first restored by the centre, 
is now on show in the Museum of the Biblioteca Alexandrina. Each object, as it arrives, is under the responsibility of inspectors from the Egyptian Antiquities Authority. It is inventoried, restored, stored and preserved. The eventual scientific examination is under the overall supervision of Jean-Yves Empereur. The Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine invites specialists from all over the world and thus ensures studies in ceramology, numismatics and paleometallurgy studies of lapidary blocks, archaeozoology, and archaeoanthropology. The study of amphora stamps is mainly conducted by the University of Izmir. There is a team of illustrators on hand to prepare illustrations for future publications. The Franco-German program entitled Ceram Alex, supported by the National Research Agency, has led the center to equip itself with a lab for materials analysis. A combination of chemical analyses with petrographic examination can result in effective identification of the characteristics of ceramic clays. The offices and services of the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine occupy several storeys of a large building. Since Alexandria is in a constant state of change, the cartographic service endeavours to list, locate, acquire and archive maps of the town from earliest times until the present day. A GPS permanent station is installed on the roof of the centre. It serves, among other things, as a reference point for all topographic operations undertaken on the excavation sites and during explorations by the centre and all other archaeological missions active in Egypt. Okay. okay. Registering archaeological sites, establishing a geographic information system and on-site explorations are the principal means for reconstituting the ancient landscape. This program, GeoMAR, is supported by the National Research Agency and was inaugurated in January 2013. Géomar est un autre projet au sud du lac Mariout qui vise, avec, en collaboration avec le service archéologique égyptien, à établir un système d'information géographique sur tous les sites antiques connus à ce jour, de façon à pouvoir préserver les plus importants de cette construction galopante qui affecte cette région. Le centre d'études participe à d'autres fouilles que les siennes Alors le centre d'études d'Alexandrine participe en effet aux fouilles du service archéologique égyptien de façon presque systématique à Alexandrie, avec notre service de cartographie, de topographie, mais aussi notre service photographique, photogrammétrique, etc. Donc nous sommes associés étroitement à toutes les fouilles égyptiennes à Alexandrie et dans ses environs. A female bust backed by Estelle 
and two joined hands have been held in the Royal Museum of Marimont in Belgium since 1912. They were unearthed from a marshy plot of land to the east of Alexandria. By looking into accounts left by travellers, cartographers and scholars of past centuries, the museum decided to try to identify the site in which these fragments of statue were found. This led to excavations between 2008 and 2012 in the district of Smuha, which were supported by the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine. The centre's library is specialised in all research that touches upon Alexandria from antiquity until the present day. It also holds general and reference works on the Greco-Roman era, periodicals, proceedings of conferences and collective studies. Alongside archaeology, the centre is also engaged in studies concerning the modern history of Alexandria and Egypt. A team of some ten individuals works daily on the digitising and uploading online of the French language press of Egypt. From image capture to image processing, then transformation into searchable text, there were by the end of 2014 already more than 50,000 pages that could be consulted on the internet. One of the basic objectives of the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine is the publication of research results. The Etudes Alexandrine series that began in 1998 can now boast, 15 years later, 33 published volumes. Furthermore, as a result of the activities of certain interns, the Centre has launched the publication of other works more closely related to modern Alexandria. The works of the grand scientific expeditions of the 19th century have been reissued in digital form. The books can be leafed through, page by page, but also consulted in PDF format, which offers multiple options. Links for direct access to a chapter or a plate, searchable text in natural language, an entry by place name on an interactive map. Since 2002, the Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine has been creating its own documentary films. Almost 30 of these have been produced, leading to more than 60 versions in French, English, Arabic, and in some cases, Spanish, Greek, and Turkish. There are three principal collections, The Skills of Archaeology, From Africa to India, and Impressions of Alexandria. These documents, which can be watched online, provide researchers with an opportunity to present their work at festivals and other international scientific gatherings, while also being suitable for schools and universities. In order to respond to a real need among young Alexandrian school students for information about their history and cultural heritage, an educational outreach service has been established. Its activities are built upon the scientific knowledge of the other members of the team, the archaeologists, the architects, the topographers and restorers. The Centre d'Etudes Alexandrine regularly organises conferences, academic gatherings, study days and summer schools. The variety of themes tackled is very wide. The child and death in antiquity, Egyptian water transport, Seram Alex, the Francophone press of Egypt, Mediterranean ceramics, creating a tomb, honouring the deceased, and many others. These events are also mobile. 
The Institut Français d'Egypte in Alexandria often hosts the center's exhibitions, such as that highlighting old-fashioned professions organized by the Educational Outreach Service. But there are also roundtables, seminars, and documentary film screenings. In Europe, aside from the exhibitions, The Glory of Alexandria, and From the Nile to Alexandria, more than 100,000 people witnessed the spectacle of the Cathedral d'Image in the quarries of Les Beaux in Provence. Jean-Yves, Alexandrie encore et toujours Alexandrie encore et toujours, euh, oui, certainement. Euh, bien sûr, Alexandrie est un véritable paradis euh, pour les archéologues et une ville très agréable à vivre en plus. Et il y a là encore du travail pour des siècles et des siècles.